הביטוי למילה שמות עמי, המשמעה הפשוטה, המקראית של הכוונה, שבי של העם. היהדות שנמצאת בגולה, התואר שלהם נקרא שמות עמי. העם שלי, הקודש ברוך הוא אומר, העם שלי, שקוראים השבי. In 1969, Shimon Grilius was an engineering student in the Soviet Union and a refusenik. He was active in promoting Aliyah to Israel. But I want that the points of the issues are just an illustration of how the Russian Jewish community was against the Soviet Union and it was not only to protect, but it was also to be in the head of the head and to give the fruit. He was arrested and sent in a railway boxcar to the border of Siberia for five years of hard labor. Despite being a political prisoner, Grilius, like most Russian Jews, knew little or nothing about his religion or his people. But he wanted to learn. In the infamous camp called Perm 36, Grilius met a fellow Jew who taught him about Kashrus, Shabbos, prayer, and the Hebrew language. Grilius began to practice what he learned, but in camp where many of his bunkmates were former Nazis, his life only got harder. His beard was shaved by force. He was denied the right to wear a kippah, and he was locked in solitary confinement for keeping Shabbos. In solitary confinement, the guards forbid even letters. Prisoners were severed from life outside. Yet, 1,000 miles from Moscow, Behind seven layers of fence and razor wire, Grilius dreamed of reaching out to Russian Jews. He could not know that in Israel, people dreamed of reaching him. I had a question with them. I had a question with them. I had a question with them. And I had a question with them. מסגרת ליהודי רוסיה שאפשר בתוך 18 חודש לעשות מה שכאן עושים 18 שנה. ברוך השם, קיבלנו ידיעה שקיימת. והקדוש ברוך הוא הפגיש אותי עם רב קוגל, והחלום שלי התגשם. אנחנו החלטנו לתת להם בישיבה שלנו, הייתה כבר ישיבה לפני כן. ככה <laughs> ואנחנו מהדור הראשון של המורים שלחנו כל אחד מאותה עיר, שלחנו לאותה עיר שהוא שם יעבוד. לגלות ביניהם אלו שאכפת להם מאחים ואחיות שלא יודעים כלום. ומי יכול לתת לאותם יהודים שהם עדיין נמצאים בשביל של שלטונות רוסיה אז ובצורה? אם לא אלה שהם יצאו משם חיו את השבי הזה. הם צריכים להיות המלמדים והמדרשים לאותו ציבור שעדיין לא אומר בביטוי מלא שהוא שואב נסעתי בשמיים על זה כיוון שהקודש ברוך הוא גם ודאי רוצה אנחנו מקווים ומצפים מבקשים סייעתי בשמיים מהקודש ברוך הוא שיעזור לנו After translating into Russian and distributing two of my books, From Central Park to Sinai and 2020 Vision, Shvutami invited my wife and me on a speaking tour to travel to some of the places touched by their prodigious work of spreading Torah in the former Soviet Union. 
from an idea that began in the mind of Shimon Grilius behind barbed wire. Shvut Ami today touches thousands of Jews. At the Shvut Ami Yeshiva in Yerushalayim, Russian-speaking Jews become rabbis. And these rabbis sign a contract to return to Russian communities inside and outside the former Soviet Union. In Beitar, Israel, construction has already begun on a campus which will be the largest Russian yeshiva in Israel and a center for Russian Jewry around the world. We spent Shabbos at Yeshiva Torah Chaim, 40 miles from Moscow. In a great historical irony, this yeshiva is housed in the former vacation retreat for KGB agents. Its auditorium, which used to be the movie theater, is today a base medrash. The chief rabbi of the Republic of Georgia, a soft-spoken tzaddik named Ariel Levine, is a Balchuva who was born in Tbilisi. He too was educated in Shvutami's yeshiva and returned to Tbilisi to lead his people back to Torah. We met the wonderful Rabbi Mordechai Newworth in Kiev. Russian Jewry, for us, they were our heroes. Like I remember my mother used to always tell me bedtime stories about the Russian Jews behind the Iron Curtain and stories of uh, Mendlevich and Sharansky and all the, the underground yeshivas and the Messias Nefesh. I mean, I grew up with this. But I never dreamt in my wildest dream that I'd ever make it actually to, to Ukraine or to Russia to any place. Rabbi Newworth helps operate many of the local programs, including weekly Shabbasas and a community matzah bakery, which we saw in operation. In Odessa, we visited the Tikva Orphanage with 400 Jewish boys and girls from across the expanse of the former Soviet Union. Many lived there from infancy to adulthood. The director of the orphanage was an orphan here himself. As a young man, he went to Yerushalayim to learn in Shvut Amiz Yeshiva, met his future wife, and returned to Odessa, where he now runs the orphanage in which he grew up. These rescued children, who receive all the benefits of a true Torah education, particularly moved us. Their lives are harder than ours, but they appreciate everything they have, especially their Yiddishkeit. We feel privileged to know them, including an 18-year-old tzaddik named Igor Shvetz, who gave us a beautiful recital on the piano.